Hey everyone, Andy Ruffell from eTechnics.com and you may remember that we tested two out of the four new Ryzen 5000 series processors. Well today, we've got the other two, so let's do this. Are you finding yourself building and repairing PCs all the time? Yes! Are you always misplacing your Swiss Army knife that hopefully has a Phillips head screwdriver on it? All of the time! Well, you're in luck. The eTechnics PC Maintenance Toolkit is here, and it has everything you need to build and repair PCs. It even has an Allen wrench for custom loop fittings. Yes, it actually does have a use. Head over to the eTechnics store to find out more in the link in the description below. Tweezers sold separately. So you may have seen the video where we looked at two AMD Ryzen 5000 series processors, or fourth gen if you kind of want to get technical with it and first up we had the 5900x and the 5600x very different cpus aimed at kind of very different tasks the 5900x being more aimed towards kind of you know workload as well as gaming the 5600x really trying to sort of you know peak that value for money aspect of things today we've got something completely different 5800x and the monster the beast the behemoth 5950x Obviously that's not gonna be for the faint hearted, but let's talk a little bit about the specs before we actually delve into them glorious benchmarks. So let's start with the 5800X. It's got eight cores and 16 threads and operates at 3.8 gigahertz on the base clock. Has a boost clock of 4.7 gigahertz and has a TDP of 105 watts. The 5950X, however, which falls under the Ryzen 9 category is a 16 core, 32 thread, 3.4 gigahertz base clock monster. Boost clock, are you ready for it? It's not quite there, but 4.9 gigahertz. I mean, in all honesty, it would have been nice to see, just to see it hit that five gigahertz mark, just to kind of say, yes, we did it. We've accomplished something that Intel, you know, have been doing for well, quite some time now. Again, all of the same features as the rest of the 5000 series processors, and it has a TDP of 105 watts. So on paper, it all sounds very, very nice. And anyone, I guess, who's had one of the previous, let's call them the 800 series, so the 1800X, the 2800X, uh, 3800X, and then the consequent the XT, which was just that little bit faster. Again, this is that little bit faster. So you'd expect a small increase, but as we saw in the other video, and if you haven't actually checked that out, definitely invite you to go and do so, there is so much more to this story because of the IPC uplift. The 5000 series range of processors are just so much faster than the previous generation. And in comparison to Intel, they can really trade blows. So I guess, yeah, when it comes to it, let's just have a look at where these processors lie, compare them against the other two processors that we've already looked at, as well as a few other spatterings from Intel. Run them glorious benchmarks.
So there's the results, and I mean, if you've not looked at any content revolving around these AMD processors, then kind of where have you been? Have you been living under a rock? We all know roughly where things were going to fall, and well, they did exactly what they were supposed to do. I mean, the 5950X, solely speaking, isn't going to be aimed at gamers. It is more for kind of workload tests and things like that. So it's one of the things where, yes, it's a little bit more expensive, still technically cheaper than, let's say, Intel's HEDT stuff, and even some of, you know, their consumer chips. But if you are in the kind of industry of doing rendering, 3D animation, anything along those lines, then the 5950X is going to be the one for you because it has that nice balance of clock speed as well as cores and threads that's going to essentially save you time. And when you're working in that side of the industry, just like we do, creating content like this, time equals money because if you can save time, it allows you to do other things and that's consequently kind of going to save you money, which the money that you're then going to save is going to pay for the chip. Kind of pays for itself, right? The 5800X, however, is kind of the sweet spot. And I actually said this in my last video as well. I didn't really care so much for the 5600X, the 5800X, the 5900X. For me, I'm actually kind of awaiting the non-X parts, the ones that haven't even been announced. So we're talking about the 5600. If it's anything to go by on previous generations with the 3600, 2600, 1600, then it's always kind of been that lovely sweet spot of value for money. So that's the one that I'm actually really, really looking forward to. Obviously, we do have the AMD graphics cards coming out as well. So I'm interested to see how these perform with that based on what we've already seen, kind of pairing up an AMD offering on the desktop processor side and then an AMD offering on the GPU side. Is that going to be that wonderful kind of, you know, harmonious outcome? Well, I guess we're going to have to wait to see for that. Now, what about pushing these chips that little bit further? That's something that we all are interested in doing. And I've been kind of pretty firm on where I stand on overclocking. I honestly think that overclocking is kind of a little bit of a dying art, but we did it anyway. So starting with the 5800X, we were able to get this up to 4.8 gigahertz using 1.335 volts. We did actually manage to hit five gigahertz, but even at 1.4 volts, it wasn't stable. So we backed off until it was stable on all cores. Moving over to the 5950X, we got this up to 4.6 gigahertz using 1.275 volts. Now it would actually boot at 4.7 gigahertz, but wasn't stable under our current setup. And that actually involved going all the way up to 1.4 volts. For 24 seven usage, I really wouldn't like to go above 1.35 volts, even if you're on a decent AIO or a beefy cooler, like we were using with the Notchua D15S. We try and take overclocking a bit like the average consumer would. Not too aggressive, but kind of simple, trying to push it as far as we can, but then clawing back down on the voltage. So yeah, hopefully it's given you guys something to think about. And uh, I'm actually very, very interested. Are you guys kind of looking more towards 5600X or more towards the higher end? And if you are looking for that higher end, is it because you do that little bit more than just gaming? Is it all about kind of workload, animation, 3D rendering, that kind of stuff? Or like me, are you waiting for the non-X parts, which should offer a little bit of kind of better value for money? Really interested to see what you guys think. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know exactly what to do and I'll see you in the next one. See you later guys. Bye-bye.